My name is Martin Paul. I'm a pro staff with Gibbs Delta Tackle. Uh, it's kind of a unique story, you know, with the way that social media is going. Um, it's not, there's other people than guides that are getting involved um, with sharing gear and pictures and doing all that. Um, and for me, just kind of a backstory, uh, it's relatively short. I've only been fishing for six years, I think, total. Um, and thanks to two guys, actually. One guy for getting me started in the river, and he's sitting over here, his name's Mike Fox. And the first Chinook I ever hooked was during the Eagles Derby up north, and Ed Keller in the back. So he's, he's kind of been, these two have been my role models for fishing. And then, one other thing I want to hit on is, I don't know how many people know uh, the amount of work that Ron does for our fisheries here. Um, recreational anglers are do-it-yourselfers for the most part. And the one thing that's hard with do-it-yourselfers is to get a bunch of do-it-yourselfers together to fight for fishery. So Ron has focused a lot of time, his personal time, and dedicated that down fighting for us every time that there's issues coming up in Olympia or whatever. So big thanks to Ron. If you can all give Ron a round of applause. <laughs> Cool, so we'll start. Um, I'm not a typical Chinook fisherman. Uh, my two buddies in the back know anyone who's fished with me. I don't typically fish um, the 90 to 120 thing. That's not my jam. So here's some stuff I'll get into. I'm gonna go right over through the basics, get into some gear, and then I'll go into how I'm trolling. So we'll, we'll do rods and reels, flashers, spoons, bait, trolling methods, and finding fish. So uh, you can see some different rods here. We know that uh, every, a lot of people here using um, level wines. Is there any knuckle buster guys here? You raise your hands for knuckle busters. You all are heroes. <laughs> you and far between, you are heroes. So uh, knuckle buster here. Um, we've got a conventional here. This is this is why I love conventionals. Um, this is a good friend of mine. Him and his son. First time ever out on the water. Um, first time fishing, and they got into a chinook, and they got to together so conventionals are good for that um, so we'll get into the rods for conventionals this is typically what I would use uh, slow to moderate action being that we're going to be on downriggers right so you're going to be a lot of these rods are going to be loaded fast action rods some people like them but a fast action rod is you get a lot of, you get a lot of tip movement so it's kind of hard to really load that rod up when you are we have that rod loaded you're going to be you're going to have a huge kind of slack section in, right? And if it doesn't, if, when you pop it out of the clip, you're going to have like this moment where there won't be, you'll have a lot of slack and we run barbless here so you can lose some fish. So slow action will be really nice for that kind of bend and making sure that we're loading up that rod really good. 8-6, uh, 10-6 six, six rod, 10 to 25 pounds, plenty for winter black mount. Um, reels, any level one, we're anglers, everyone is very picky about their gear. Uh, I do not think it really matters too much on your expense of your reel because they're in salt water and you're going to destroy them. And things happen, they get beat off the deck, you know. So it doesn't have to be a million dollar rod or reel. Um, I run monofilament line on both my sets of reels. I don't like braid because it doesn't stretch. So another thing with barbless is if you're, you got fish running at you or whatever, it's taken off and it's head shaking pretty hard. Braid doesn't have a lot of stretch, and and then not very forgiving, uh, and it doesn't stick in clips very well. Um, I don't know if anybody else had bad luck with braid and clips, but it's horrible. Um, like I said, they don't need to be expensive. So I run BC mooching rods. Uh, I just switched to Islanders a couple of years ago. I was running Daiwas um, prior to that. This photo here is actually my father-in-law. This was in Canada, um, and these are uh, Daiwas. And Daiwa rods. These pretty much are always going to be slow to a very moderate action, not more on the slow end. Um, you're, and you're going to run a uh, long rod, 10 6, 10 to 25 pound. And you want to run the long rods with these because you're going to be reeling like four inches at a time, usually, for revolution. There's not a whole lot of, uh, you, you get pretty good at running your kicker. Uh, uh, so you get pretty good at running your kicker when you're using uh, mooching reels, uh, chasing fish or running away from them. 
whatever you gotta do. Um, 20 to 30 pounds um, monofilaments. Some people use backing. I use backing on mine, not because it matters about anything. A lot of the new reels, the new mooching reels, you don't actually need to run backing on them. Um, they're engineered a little bit different now. They used to have to run backing, and what it would what would happen is, is your line would shrink down on it too tight and then they would break reels. Um, I just run it because I like the look of it. So you don't need to run backing. Um, a lot of people confuse backing with braid. Braid and backing are not the same. Um, I run a 30 pound fly line backing on my mooching reels. If you decide that that's what you like, you don't run braid, braid gets super tight. Um, and I always throw in, what about my knuckles? Here's the key. Here's the, the key with knuckle busters. Don't take your hand out, roll it under me. When you take your hand out and you try to come back in, that's when you're gonna get bit. So always roll underneath and you need roll up. You'll hit this portion of your palm and not right here. And in the winter time, we all know what this feels like when it's super cold outside. And if you run the interior gear out. So here's some flashers. Uh, this is my pup right here, one of them. This is my wife. Uh, I don't run short flat or small flashers. Some guys like to run 8-inch flashers. I pretty much stick with 11-inch flashers. They've worked. Um, I know some of the smaller times, or some of the smaller flashers work really well, but uh, you could be like Alex and just run no flasher at all and, uh, and drag spins and bait around, which works as well. But so flashers, there's two theories I've heard. They either represent Chinook or other fish eating bait or they represent bait. I don't really know. I don't really care. They work for either. It, it works awesome. So um, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, too much on that. Um, you can run them off the ball or run them off your main line. Um, some people will run flashers just off the ball with a, a release that they've tied up and then they can be free and run their main line. I run mine tied onto my main line and I fix the flasher. It's a personal preference. Um, what I do know is that when they are tied into your main line, you do get action on your lures from them. Uh, UV and glow stuff will be, so you'll have, you'll have blades that are UV and tape that's UV. This flasher right here is got UV and glow tape, but the tape is UV and all these blades that gives uses, other than they will discontinue stuff, is gonna be UV. So the new Herring Egg Clear is a UV blade. Um, and I'll kind of get into UV and my theories on UV in a little bit. Um, glow blades, there are some glow blades. I don't have any glow blades in this picture, but over here, there are, one of the brands that Gibbs has is Oki, Oki Tackle. The, they actually have injection molded plastic that is glow blade, so they don't always necessarily use a glow crinkle tape or glow tape. So some of the blades are gonna be glow. And uh, when you're gonna use glow, typically is when it's really dark, the water's murky, muddy, you get a big bloom. Um, every now and then you'll get big blooms, algae blooms or whatever, um, so it'll be really hard. And sometimes, it just depending on where in the water column it's gonna be, if you're fishing really deep, you're gonna use glow. Other than one time in summer, I'll explain about how UV was working at 350 feet of cable. It's super deep. Um, and then, so here's, a, here's some flashers. So I'll go over some of my favorite flashers and what I typically would start out with and feed the sound every year. So I, this is my go-to. This is what we just got our fish on on the first, is the green watermark flasher. Um, it's crinkle glow, glow back. I actually. So Watermark is a charter in Canada, and he's a really good friend of mine, and I hike with him all the time. And the guy is dead set on crinkle UV and crinkle glow. That's his thing. And it's actually worked out really well down here. On a, I didn't circle this one, but because of my buddy Wayne here, we had one of those days where you're not catching anything, right? And you're, you're like, well, I'm going to go to my go-tos, and that's what I'm going to do, and that's where I'm going to stay. And those are the best times to get out of your go-tos and start throwing the sink at them. Right, so he tells me to put on this white watermark flasher here, which is a UV glow, UV blade, uh, sorry, white blade, UV front finish, and glow back finish. And I'm like, there's no way, dude, you're not catching anything on that. 
but whatever, waste your time. And uh, and then he actually ended up hooking like a 12 pound black mouth in it, in like no time, it was like three or four minutes, and he had one on. So it's not always traditional. Um, what I, my two popular things that I've been running a lot in the last couple of years is these purple phantoms. And they're a moon jelly, purple and kind of the traditional moon jelly, and they've worked really well. Um, this has worked really well in the summer times in area 10, and this has worked really well, this is UV blade in the winter time. And with bait or spoons, um, and I'll talk about pairing flashers with spoons here in a little bit. This is the new hearing aid line. Um, this particular one is the UV, and so this is what I was going to talk about with Super Deep. I would normally fish glow all the time, and uh, another guy that's sitting here, his name's Kyle. We were, we were out at Hind Bank one time, and we're fishing, we fished like all night, we're getting anything, we're getting anything, and he's like, dude, I just got one, and there's no glow on anything, so we were like, okay, whatever, and he's like, and I'm really deep, so what we do, we go out and fish super deep, like really, really deep, not that I've ever fished that deep in my life, and I'll explain why I don't fish deep later, but we were like 315 to 350 feet of cable out, and like 220 to 250 feet of water, and it was unbelievable fishing. And it's by accident. I would never do that normally. And it just happens that when you change it up and you do something different, you feel that you're going to find the fish. So this is the Super Series. Um, I have some folder pictures on my Instagram and Facebook. And I run this almost always with bait. Uh, but this green one has been really good for Area 10. Um, it's got a nice UV finish on the front and a glow on the back. And there's different colors. There's red. Black. I know a guy who does really good on black, and he's a pretty good fisherman. I would trust his word for anything. He does really good on this black one. Um, the Bon Chovy is another good one. And Bon Chovy um, is a charter that she was talking about earlier with uh, that runs out of uh, Vancouver. And they fish all over the place. And they've got a few boats, but so that's named after their, their charter. Um, I'll get into spoons here. So here's some... This is why I do, I, we have kind of... A few of us have start taking in water picture. And I'll start it from a guy in Canada in Shushwap area. And uh, after talking with him, he kind of gave me some tips on how to get some pictures. So the one best way to show what you're using is while well, it's in the water. Um, so this this picture here was taken at San Juans. This was a Camino. These were the San Juans. Uh, this is the San Juan fish. This is Camino. These are area 10. Um, so the in-water stuff's kind of been cool. You get to see what, what they're actually hitting on. It's, it's really easy to take pictures like this. And it's not very easy to get pictures like this. You end up taking about 1,000 pictures and you get one. So we'll go into spoons. Um, the different types of spoons that I would use are the Ouija, the Skinny G, the G-Force, obviously the Silver Horde Kingfisher, and the Coho Killer. Now, how are you going to decide what spoon you want to use, right? So. It's all depending on what you're going to get. So you, you have your, your go-tos that you normally run. You get a fish in the boat, you cut it open right away, open it up, and then see what it's been eating. And uh, if, you, if you fish an area a lot, you'll know kind of what bait's around all the time. Um, I was fairly new to Area 7 a couple years ago, so I was trying to learn you know, what the fish were eating. In certain areas, they were eating herring, and then another area, they were eating sand lance. So depending on what you find inside your fish, you're going to want to pick the size of your spoon. Um, you know, the G4s, the Kingfishers, are pretty good for herring and anchovy sized fish. You can go all the way up to six inch in the G4s, depending on where you're at. We were fishing the San Juans and had a, um, a Chinook that we had caught and it had a full belly. We opened it up and we're like, oh man, this thing's going to eat a ton of herring. One herring in it. It was this giant horse herring inside it. So we bumped up our spoon size and then we started catching fish. So knowing what, so to pick your spoon size, just know what your bait is around there because they're, part, you know, they're, they're going to be feeding. That's all they're there for. Yeah, what they're going to be hitting their spoon is they're going to be looking for feed. Um, there's different, there's UVs, there's glows. Typically, almost every spoon that I run in the Puget Sound is going to be uh, glow or have a glow on it with UV. All the, spe all the spoons have UV paint now for the most part. Um, but almost all of them are glow back. I think every spoon in here is glow, except for these two up here, which they're hard to see. They are glow front, UV back, and they're or nickel back. 
uh, leader. So uh, some people like to run mono. I run only fluorocarbon leaders. I like rigid, stiff leaders. I don't. I don't really care so much about the clear. But if you're running clear, so right, you're trolling right here. You're trolling along, and typically a fish is going to come up from behind and grab your leader. I'm not really going to see your leader. In my opinion, I don't think it really matters too much. But the stiff action of a leader is really nice because um, you'll get a little bit of a whip with that flasher. And you can tell based on your leader length. So the good number, everyone's seen Jones page. 42 inches is pretty much a, a bomb leader to go to right off the bat. And then you can adjust from there. So um, 36 inch leaders, you actually can watch them. We sent a camera down for the flasher and you watch it and your spoon's fluttering doing its thing and then it gives a, a good kick. And sometimes that's that extra little kick is all you need to get those fish to bite. And you'll see them, they'll follow gear for a long ways. And if you shorten up a leader, you get a little whip, and then all of a sudden it works. Sometimes they get flasher shy, and you extend your leader's way out, or you take a flasher off. So you can run them up to 60 plus, but typically you're gonna run 36 to 48, 42 being pretty much perfect to start with. Um, hooks, uh, three aught or two aught side wash hooks. I use owner hooks, I like their hooks. Um, ever, some people like big river bends. I like that they have a long shank and that they sit kind of behind the spoon quite a bit. You know, when you're trolling and you make a kind of a rad turn or whatever, there's a current that pushes your gear. They got a little bit of a, a extra length to grab onto that hook. Um, I don't sharpen hooks. Hooks are cheap now. Some of that, some some people sharpen them. You can do it. I change them out. I actually just watched a video just recently about a guy talking about sharpening hooks, and when you sharpen hooks, you actually start cutting down your shank length. Um, it's probably very small, but over time, it's one of those things you don't catch until later that your hook's been filed down quite a bit, and then uh, and you're missing, you're getting a lot of missed hits, or you're losing a lot of fish. You're not getting a good, deep penetration with them. So some people modify. I don't modify spoons. John has a way to modify. I think they work great right out of the box. The, even the kingfishers, they don't have like a super deep cut, but they, when you see them in the water, they're, they work pretty well and they look, they look really well. Um, you can modify them all you want, but honestly, I think right out of the box, they run great. I don't, I don't modify any of my spoons. When and what to use is all dependent on your bait, where you're at, water clarity. Um, you know, there's all the, the thoughts of like low pressure and rain and cloudy days, and they, they all do matter. Yes, Alex, what's that? When you say modify your spoon, do you mean like not even change your hook? Bending. Okay, bending. Bending. So yeah, modifying by bending. Um, some people will bend the heads one way and the tail another or whatever, or they'll give them a kind of a tighter bend. And um, you can get some more action out of them, but it doesn't, to me, it doesn't, doesn't seem to really matter. Um, so when and what to use, you know, uh, so it's like, what, what does it add? Like March, April, we get that big algae bloom? Yep. So that, those times, if you, can, you can't see three feet into the water. But those times are gonna choose uh, like a heavy, heavy, heavy glow. And depending on um, the type of spoon and the manufacturer and what paints they're using, you can choose spoons with a deep, deep, heavy glow. And that's gonna matter a lot. Um, and then too, when, you know, like herring spawning times, um, Places up north where you know, like, like Hope Island is a big area for herring spawning. Um, so if you're running up there and you know that it's going to be herring spawning time, you're going to want to want to run a spoon that's the size of your herring. Or in the summertime, you get a lot of sand lance in Area Seven. So you know the Ouija's or the Cove Killers, which are very similar, by the way, um, are great spoons for that. And then uh, this is a pet peeve of mine, and I know some, everyone kind of does their own thing, but I do not run coho killers or Ouija's in the wintertime. And we all kind of know how our fisheries go for the wintertime. It can be really rough and you can get into a lot of small fish. You're getting into small fish. I, I know people are, are diehard die coho killer fans and Ouija fans. Bump your, bump your sizes up. Go to bait, go to larger spoons, get out of the small fish, speed up, do whatever you can, right? Because all that stuff affects how long we're gonna be fishing for. Um, and they do work, they catch some big fish. We fished the derby one time and we caught some really nice fish with coho killers and luckily the shakers had moved out. But if you're getting into shakers, you need to upsize and speed up because they're gonna, they're gonna put a hurting on your quota quick. So here's some different, here's the Ouija's. You can see how very similar to the coho killer they are. They're very small profile. They're actually a little bit smaller. Um, 
So this is actually a, um, a skinny G and a wee G here. And this is the day I went with a guy who fished with him for the first time. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was bomb fishing, it was amazing. And stuff that I don't typically run, I don't run the no bananas because uh, I'm known as being a banana guy because I don't really care. I have bananas on my boat all the time. Um, yeah, I see, yeah, there's a ton of you people here. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is actually, so here I put these pictures in intentionally. This is from the opening weekend. Uh, this is the Bon Chovy Skinny G. Uh, and it matches a lot of the herring size down south and at Jeff Head. Um, you can see them rolling in, in, you know, when you start getting into the late spring. You'll see huge balls of herring and stuff coming in. Um, and it matches their size pretty well. So I just wanted to show that, you know, this is a, this is a decent sized spoon. And that's this spoon right here. Skinny G, it's got really good bends on it. Um, works pretty well. One of those things right out of the box. Uh, they run mustads on them. Once they rust out, I just switch them over to owners. This is the G-Force, very similar to the um, Silver Horde Kingfisher. And uh, this is the Irish Cream right here. Both of these are the Irish Cream. Uh, these are two separate fish on the same day up in Area 7. Uh, they go any, up to, they actually go up to six inch. Um, I typically run three and a half, just like I run my Kingfishers. And that actually, I'm gonna go back to that because, so that, these are the Titan Spoons. Um, four and five inch only. And that video was taken by one of the admin of uh, Fish and Washington PNW, and that is that fish in January on that Titan spoon, and that's the chartreuse watermark. And so this day we were running pretty long leaders, as you can see here. Um, it just happened to be that type of day. So here's Silver Boards. This isn't their big lineup, they've got tons of spoons. And Gibbs, Gibbs is a distributor for Silver Board in Canada. So they do all of Silver Horde stuff um, for BC. Uh, and then co Killers, uh, you know, there's the Herring Aid, uh, let's see, the Mother of Pearl, White Lightning. Army Truck's always a good one to go to.